Aloha and welcome to the Senate Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism hearing for 1 p.m. decision making. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube. We have two measures to decision make on. Uh, first one up is SB 3006 relating to the Convention Center. My recommendation is to pass out an SD1 making technical amendments needed for consistency and clarity, clarity and affecting the date to January 1st, 2016. Uh, any questions? Okay. Uh, so, uh, Senator Kim, for the vote, Chair votes aye. Okay, the chair votes aye on Senate Bill 3006, passed with amendments. Senator Kai is excused. Senator Fukunaga? Aye. I vote aye. Senator Favela is excused. Three members present to excuse. Recommendations adopted. Thank you. Uh, next up is Senate Bill 3197 relating to advertising. Uh, I appreciate all of the testimony on this measure. I appreciate all of the input by those opposed, wanting to ensure we keep our state beautiful and free of the billboards that are prevalent on the mainland. In this instance, I feel we can protect our, our vistas and views while we also have economic opportunities for our state-run entertainment and convention facilities that are done in a respectful and tasteful way. Mahalo to Vice Chair Kai for working diligently on the proposed SD1 that has been distributed to the committee members. This proposed SD1 combines the naming rights and advertising to the Stadium Authority and the Convention Center into one measure. I would like to note the protections and limitations in this bill. On page 9, in relation to outdoor advertiser at the Stadium Development District, the devices displayed shall A, face the interior of the Stadium Development District, B, designed for pedestrians within the Stadium Development District, and C, not be used solely for the purpose of commercial advertising. And 20, would notwithstanding any limitation of paragraph 19, any outdoor advertising device for naming the stadium facility, which may include the name and brand of a public or a private entity, displayed with the authorization of the stadium authority in or on the stadium facility within the stadium development district, provided that an outdoor advertising device displayed under this paragraph shall not contain moving images. And also starting on the bottom of page 10 regarding the convention center, 22, any outdoor ad advertising device displayed with the authorization of the Hawaii Tourism Authority in or on the convention center facility and outdoor advertising device displayed under the paragraph, this paragraph that faces the exterior of the convention center facility shall a consist only of the name of the sponsoring entity and the words Hawaii Convention Center, Hawaii Convention Center or Convention Center and may include a company logo and B, be static and contain no video or moving images. And 23, any outdoor advertising device for naming the convention center facility, which may include the name and brand of a public or a private entity displayed with the authorization of the Hawaii Tourism Authority in or on the convention center facility, provided that an outdoor advertising dis device displayed under this paragraph shall not contain moving images. My recommendation is to pass as an SD1 using the proposed SD1 that I have provided to, all, to the committee, uh, emailed out earlier, provided by Vice Chair Wakai making technical amendments needed for consistency and clarity and defecting the, the date to January 1st, 2016. Any questions from the committee? Question. Senator Kim. Um, sorry, I didn't really get a chance to look at the proposed SD1, but in the case of the stadium with the advertisements facing inwards, what happens when that housing and so forth happens? Are, is, are those signs, signage going to be interrupting people living on the stadium um, district? Yeah. Residential units and so forth? I'll also have Vice Chair answer the question. Keep in mind that any advertising in the inner core of the stadium is going to be at the pedestrian level. So you're not going to perhaps, let's just say, see a Hilton 40 story hotel and see Hilton plastered on the side of the hotel. That's not going to be uh, allowable. So if you can think about it, it's a 98 acres. And if you think of it as a shell, everything that might be advertising is going to be facing in. Nothing except for the naming of the stadium, which is going to be static. Everything else outside of that will not be seen by those who are driving by or, or uh, walking by? Well, my question is more for when you build the residential units. 
I assume that residential units will be on within that perimeter. So if you have townhouses and so forth and, and units, so those on the lower level, if you have these images facing inward and they can see, see it, is that what's going to happen? I think that's a possibility because it'll be at, at grade, but if you're going to build a most apartment complexes don't put the units on on the first level right you're going to be maybe parking or what have you so your housing might start on floor number six and above so there will be uh, pedestrian level uh, activation there but uh, I, I don't know many housing complexes that put the units directly on the first floor oh no most of the buildings have units on, on especially town unit. I don't know what kind of units will be there, but if you do in fact have those homes there, um, and if they, they can't have, they can't have electronic signage facing inwards. At the pedestrian level. At the pedestrian correct. level, so that could affect people, even if on the sixth floor, that could affect them as well. That's a possibility. Okay. okay. Sure. Any other questions? Seeing none. Um, sorry. I'll put my glasses back on. Oh, Senator Fukunaga. Oh, Senator Fukunaga, sorry. Sorry, you know, I um, I appreciate the work that Senator Wakai has put into, you know, this version. I think he has tried to strike a balance, you know, based on the, the testimony that uh, was occurred during the last hearing. I guess one concern I continue to have, even though um, there's a specific set of conditions that um, would prohibit moving images, I think for the general public and in, you know, both in the convention center area as well as in the stadium area, I think any image tends to be distracting. So, you know, I'm sorry, I, I cannot support the SD1 version, although I think it's a good faith effort, you know, to try and narrow what was previously um, proposed. I think because of the, the scale and the number of um, people who travel the areas, it's, um, it's, it's something that I can't support. Anyway, thank you. Thank you so much. If you could use that argument, then a speed limit sign, a directional sign, they're all distracting to drivers because they're static and just sitting there. And that's all this would be. It's like one corporate name on the side of the stadium. So I don't see how that is any more distracting than a stop sign, a yield sign, or a speeding sign. But thank you. Senator Kim. Uh, I just want to um, raise my concerns. I don't have a problem with the naming on the building. I don't have a problem with signage within the stadium itself. But I think when we talk about the district and that huge area, cannot help but affect whatever housing and so forth that may be within the district. So for me, it's a little too broad at this point. So um, yeah, I, I'm not able to support it in with this language. If you cut out within the development district and just stay within the stadium, I'm fine with that. Instead of saying within the stadium district, I find it within the stadium and then have the naming rights. Okay, any other questions? Okay, um, with that being said, I would like to um, pass out an SD1 incorporating the uh, the language from Senator Kim, so removing development district throughout development district without throughout the bill. So that it, throughout the bill. Throughout the bill. Um, chair votes aye. Uh, Senator Wakai for the vote. Oh, I don't have the vote. Oh, can I have the vote sheet? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Pass, pass, pass. Chair votes aye, Senator Wakai for the vote, please. Vice Chair votes yes, Senator Fukunaga. No. Senator Kim? Uh, aye. Senator Fabella? Aye. Chair, your recommendations are adopted. Thank you. And with that, this meeting is adjourned.
Hello and welcome to Senate Committee on Energy, Economic Development, and Tourism, joint hearing with the Committee on Agriculture and Environment, 1 p.m. agenda. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube in the likely event <clears throat> that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties. The committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. on Thursday, February 15, 2023 in this room, 2 to 9, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature website. Please note we have a two-minute limit per test of our uh, first bill up is Senate Bill 2500 relating to value-added products. Uh, first testifier for debate, Director Tokioka. I did Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chairs, member of the committee. DBED stands on its testimony in strong support. Um, we do offer uh, for your consideration an amendment that wasn't included. Um, we would ask for your consideration for one FTE for a director for the Food and Product Innovation Network. Um, DBED did request this initially in our budget, but given the current fiscal situation with a natural disaster on our neighbor island, um, no new positions were included. However, Things are moving quite fast with infrastructure and programs with our um, University of Hawaii Community College, as well as uh, 500,000 was left in last year's budget to start the planning um, for a facility here on Oahu. And 9.5 is currently in the admin budget for the facilities um, for our neighbor islands. And that's also reflected in this bill, which is currently blanked out. So we'd ask for your consideration for one FTE. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, uh, next up, Agar ADC. Wendy Gady, in support. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. Wendy Gady with the Agribusiness Development Corp. We stand in very strong support. This is rural jobs, this is economic development, and this is growing our farmers' revenue streams. We appreciate your consideration and are here for questions. Thank you. Uh, next up, University of Hawaii, Erica Lacro. La did I pronounce that right? Erica Lacro, but not Erica Lacro. That's what I was about. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, Aloha chairs, vice chairs, and members of the committee. Carlos Peñalosa, Leeward Community College Chancellor. Uh, we submitted written testimony in strong support of this bill. Uh, I will echo the need for the one FTE for the director of the Food uh, and Product Innovation Network in here if you have any questions. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Michael Munikata on behalf of Ulupono Initiative in support. Good afternoon, Chair Dekoit, Vice Chair Wakai, Chair Gavin, Vice Chair Richards, and members of the committees. My name is Michael Munikata. I'm testifying on behalf of the Ulupono Initiative in strong support of this measure, Chair. Uh, just wanting to provide some stats of where we're at with agriculture today. According to the USDA, U.S. farm establishments received 14.9 cents per dollar spent on domestically produced food in 2022, one of the lowest recorded farm show values in nearly three decades. Uh, additionally, uh, depending on the type of produce, the percentage of harvest that might be classified as off-grade can range from 10 to 40 percent of what you actually produce on your farm. So, you know, finding innovative ways in which we can utilize some of these off-grades and really help add value to some of our farm products is going to be key. I have a very simple um, example I'd like to share with you folks with um, regarding leaf lettuce growers here in Hawaii. Uh, raw, they get about two to four dollars per pound. You know, some of these growers if add value to their product by washing it, cutting it, packaging and mixing it with different varietals and then putting them in clamshell boxes. From that two to four dollar per pound range, it actually increases from two, nine to twelve dollars per pound. Value added is very key for our agriculture industry. It adds a lot of hope for agriculture moving forward. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Uh, next up, Hawaii Farm Bureau, Brian Miyamoto in support. Good afternoon, Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committees, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. We'll stand on the written testimony in support. Thank you. Anybody else in the room wishing to testify? Seeing none, uh, just for the record, uh, correction, it's a one minute time limit. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, any questions from the committee? Seeing none, uh, moving on, uh, SB 2675 relating to renewable energy and food security. First, just to fire up Chief Energy Officer Mark Glick. 
in support and on Zoom. Oh, maybe not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, good afternoon. Thank you, chairs, vice chairs, members of the committees. We, uh, I'm Stephen Walls here on behalf of the Hawaii State Energy Office and wanted to stand on our written testimony and uh, thank everyone here for their continued attention to this issue of resolving tensions between local energy production and local food production. Thank you. Very thank much. you. Uh, next up, Robert King uh, for biodiesel, Pacific Biodiesel Technologies on Zoom. I, I know you're not Michael King either. Hello, I'm Chair. Robert uh, this is James Forrest for Pacific Biodiesel. Okay, go ahead. Thank you, chairs and vice chairs and members of the committee. Um, I want to draw your attention to a particular part of our testimony uh, related to analysis of life cycle emissions. Um, for, for bills related <coughs> to renewable energy, we think it's very important that uh, Increased incentives require increased benefits to the state. Uh, I think the best way to measure that is by providing life cycle analysis of renewable energy projects um, and also setting a bar to achieve so that people that are receiving benefits, uh, for example, reduce greenhouse gas emissions by 50% or more. Uh, a, that's a common amount that's in federal incentives. Um, other than that, we stand on our, our written testimony and are here for questions. Thank you. Uh, next up, Kavika Kahiapo in support. Hawaii Farm Bureau, Brian Miyamoto with comments. Thank you, chairs, members of the committees, Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bureau. Uh, we submitted testimony providing comments. Uh, I think you've heard the Hawaii Farm Bureau come before this body many years um, with concerns about renewable energy. The Hawaii Farm Bureau absolutely 100% supports renewable energy, but you heard the State Office Energy, there is tension. Farmland is very suitable for housing developments and now for solar developments. So we appreciate this measure. Uh, we do suggest or ask the committee to consider not just food production, but all ag production that can be done with renewable energy projects also. The bill actually only specifies food, uh, nursery products. Again, we are doing some research with agrovoltaics, and I think that's what this bill is speaking to. We want to find dual uses and alleviate that tension because a lot of times agriculture loses out. So if we want to achieve our goals, doubling food production, farm to food bank, farm to school, and in the previous bill, FPINs, we're going to need farming and agriculture and we are losing the fight. So we appreciate the opportunity to provide comments and consider including all ag in a project such as this. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Jacqueline Ambrose in support, Caroline Az Azelski in support, and Regina Gregory in support. Anybody else in the room wishing to testify on this measure? I'm sorry. No, Dexter. I I apologize. Uh, we didn't get testimony in in time. So I would like, I'm sorry, Dexter Kishida, Deputy at Hawaii Department of Agriculture. Uh, this is definitely a piece that I'd like to state, similar to what Brian Miyamoto shared. Um, let's relieve this tension between uh, energy production and agriculture. We suggest a few language changes. Um, in Section 205, 21A, instead of just saying the area occupied by, let's say under and adjacent to, because let's make this energy and ag truly agriculture, not just bio lawn mow mowing or, or things like that. Um, the solar energy facilities and areas should be put into compatible agriculture activities by a farm operation that derives revenue from the sale of production. So really making these viable farm businesses, um, not just accessories to energy production. Thank you. Thank you. Can I get a copy of the I testimony, also. please? Thank yeah. you. Uh, anybody else wishing to testify? Seeing none, any questions from the committee? Okay. Uh, next bill up is let's 
Senate Bill 2935 relating to composting. First testifier of ADC, Wendy Gaddy. Gaddy. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee. I'm Wendy Gaddy with the Agribusiness Development Corp. And we stand in strong support for this bill. It saves water, it saves landfills, and it builds our soil. Thank you. Next up, Ted Bolin uh, in support. Brian Miyamoto in support with the Hawaii Farm Bill. Thank you, Chairs, Vice Chairs, and members of the committees. Brian Miyamoto here on behalf of the Hawaii Farm Bill. You have a written testimony in support. We absolutely support composting. We do caution that uh, we want to make sure that the County of Maui and ADC has the technical skills and the resources to properly manage a compost program. There are potential hazards, as we see now with compost and coconut monoxus beetle and other invasive species. There are other potential hazards, but again, we support composting. We just want to make sure it's done properly and that the, the oversight is there. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Thank you. Uh, next up, Kavika Kayapo in support. Caroline Azelski in support. Jacqueline Ambrose also in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Department of A, do you want to testify on this measure? Yes, of course. Just sending you my testimony from the last one. Um, Dexter Kishida, Department of Agriculture. Um, as, again, Brian Miyamoto shared, composting is absolutely essential for our farmers to increase soil health, but we also want to make sure it's done properly and, and, and not exacerbating our invasive species problems. So running it through um, one of the, our, our sister agencies like ADC be great. Um, currently, the department is in the second year of implementing our compost reimbursement program uh, that you, so, you also generously uh, allocated to us. Um, the prior year, we reimbursed businesses or agriculture businesses about 380,000. This year, we're slated to do the full 450,000 in compost reimbursements. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to testify? Seeing none, any questions from the committee? Question, okay. Chair. Uh, so, so ADC. Scabbard. <coughs> uh, Wendy, is there a timeline established when the composting uh, program will be operational? As soon as the money is made available, within about 30 days, we yes. should be planning it and executing it. A million dollars uh, is sufficient to cover it. Well, we would always like to have a little bit more, especially <laughs> given the invasive species and doing a really, really definitely good job in monitoring that if possible. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you, Chair. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Wendy, if you can come back, please. Um, Any one of those guys. So, so Wendy, the bill has ADC operating and managing the composting program in conjunction with the County of Maui. Mm -hmm. Can you see this setup working? I can. I think that we've started to develop a very good working relationship with the director of ag on Maui and having a better understanding for the community and adhering to their um, beliefs. I think it can definitely work. Well, what is the commitment coming back from the county of Maui? I will have to get back to you on that. Okay. Um, and then how will you use the 1 million appropriated in this bill to establish the program? I think it would start with doing some training for individuals as well as some outreach and then some beta testing to make sure that our first few like five to ten have a very good um, closed loop system that basically shows the benefits so that we can bring other people up to speed show them how it's working at five to ten trial sites so all the existing people that are already doing composting have you guys not an idea of what you guys would already do and then how you would address the the movement of composting uh, while addressing the movement of invasive species that has really just been an outspread of what will cost us millions of dollars to try and prevent. I think this is where we work closely with our sister agency with HDOA and take some of the lessons learned and apply those to what's currently being done and be much more aggressive. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, moving on to our last bill, Senate Bill 3097. Relating to climate, uh, first testify up office of the governor in support. Uh, Mary Alice Evans also in support and here. Thank you, Mary Alice. Uh, next up, uh, Leah Larmy, climate change mitigation 
and Adaptation Commission. Aloha Chairs, Vice Chairs, members of the committee, mahalo. My name is Leah Laramie with the Climate Change Mitigation Adaptation Commission. Um, we're in support of this bill, but also recommend that the position be housed at the Department of Land and Natural Resources with the Climate Change Mitigation Adaptation Commission for ease of lines of communication um, as we're developing our comprehensive climate action plan that we received an EPA grant for. Um, this will just help with continued collaboration. Mahalo, available for questions. Thank you. Next up, Ted Bolin, Climate Protectors in Support, Dave Mullenix, uh, Greenpeace Hawaii in opposition on Zoom. Yes, Aloha. Can, hello, can you hear me? Yep. Okay, thank you uh, very much. Uh, Dave Mullenix with uh, Greenpeace Hawaii. We are in opposition to this uh, um, position. Uh, I have just three quick points here. Um, first of all, it's a waste of money. It's $175,000 for salary that duplicates an already existing position. Um, and th the second point is that this is a temporary position. It's not gonna give this advisor any time really to plan or strategize for, you know, for, in the long term. And uh, thirdly, if you look at the org chart for, the, for this department or for this position, um, they lack staffing. And so it'd be much better to spend this money on staffing for this position rather than uh, duplicate what already exists. Uh, as we know, we have a limited budget problems here and with Lahaina and all that, and so we shouldn't be wasting money on duplicating already have position. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, next up, we have Sherry Pollock testifying for 350 in opposition and Jacqueline Ambrose in support. Uh, anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, any questions? Seeing none, uh, oh, uh, Senator King. So, Office, uh, I guess Mary Alice, or So, what exactly would the senior advisor do? Oh, Senator, what was that? What exactly would the senior advisor do? Um, that's going to be a position that. Uh, you have to advise, speak up. It's hard to hear. Uh, my apologies. The Mary Alice Evans with the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development. Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. We can't hear you. So, bring the point in the closer. Okay, does that work better? Yeah, you gotta speak up. Sorry. Um, so a senior advisor is somebody who can work across departments in a multi-jurisdictional fashion, and that's what the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development was created for back in 1987 when it was placed in the governor's office. And a lot of its statutes, uh, sections, are uh, were, remain because uh, they are, uh, they were originally designed to do that cross-jurisdictional, multi-departmental coordination, and uh, so it's it is different than working within a department. Um, even though the Office of Planning and Sustainable Development is now attached to DBED and part of DBED, uh, it still retains that ability uh, in its sections to work. Uh, throughout the executive branch and uh, provide recommendations to the legislature. But isn't that inherent in the, in the department itself? I mean, that was the whole intent. So I said, isn't that the, inherent in this whole mission of this um, office that they would do that? And so now all of a sudden you need a senior advisor, but should it, isn't that something that was, was part of the mission to be done? And you need a specific person? That you, what, how many vacancies do you guys have? Um, I think we've got one. One vacancy. Yeah. Right. And within DBED, there's a whole bunch of vacancies, right? So why is it that you folks just can't take one of those positions? Um, well, those positions, uh, the one vacancy we have is, is a, uh, a staff position that's a lower level. And if we, when we fill that, we fill it for somebody that can work under supervision, under direct well, supervision. You can, you can revise that, right? Can't you revise the position? If you really need this, if this is a priority? I think we do because it's climate change is, cuts across all of our departments and all of our branches of government. It's a huge impact and it's going to continue and we have to do both mitigation and adaptation and it's really yeah, broad. But this person is just an advisor. I mean, it's like, how much advising? I guess I have concerns 
raised by some of the ones are saying that it's a duplicate role. And I thought the function should be embedded in the mission already. So, okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Sen Senator yes, Senator. Um, just follow up to Senator Kim's questioning about the necessity for this position. Also notice that this position, I believe, is getting paid $175,000. Mm -hmm. Why would we need to pay this person that kind of money? I mean, that's a top tier director's level salary. Because uh, the position <coughs> would be advising the governor in the legislature. You don't think this is duplicating what the energy office has been doing and can continue to do? Uh, the energy office is doing a fabulous job, and that's only a small part of climate change impact. Uh, this, this position is going to have to look at all the wide uh, variety of impacts of climate change and look at the ways that all of our state departments can infuse those adaptations uh, into their operating uh, operations so that going forward, because this climate change is going to be with us for hundreds of years, and we need to make it a permanent part of all of our operations. Mary Alice, I have great faith in you and Mr. Glick. I don't necessarily think we need a third uh, person to be in charge of helping us get to a better state, but uh, I'll end there. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Senator Favela. Yeah, I just, I don't feel that um, my personal view is the right, it's needed, or even if it is the right time. I mean, you can get somebody for doing for free. I can go and say, Shift the climate, the thing change every day. You know, the problem with this is that we're spending this kind of money, right? And then you're seeing you guys doing all of these things, but every single year since when you said climate has been changing, what was the funding that was putting this into the mechanism to, you guys use the word, stop climate changing? So if it's on this one, how much of the climate did we stop changing since this was enacted in that year? Zero. But how much money are we spending? Hundreds and thousands of dollars. So if it's not working, because this, this is what I always talk about when I first got in a chair, it was like the Skylab was falling, right? We needed to react because the Skylab is falling in the middle of our ocean will get waves. Yeah, same thing, the ozone layer. Did we fix the ozone layer? I think actually we made a big uh, improvement in oh. it. Okay, yeah. I need documentation because somebody told me the old stones still get on hold inside. So I need somebody to spray some yeah. uh, hairspray and to clean them up. <laughs> because we change every single chemical you can think of. Okay, one of them was brake fluid, a brake cleaner, hairspray, all these kind of chemicals we did for slow down the ozone and all the money we spent in doing this. But still yet, we got to put 45 degree sunscreen on us because the ozone still get on puka. So how is this, you can, I like to know when would be the end of, the, maybe you can give me maybe like 20 years from now, see if the climate would change that much, because to me, I think this is a waste of a position and money, and it's a want, not a need, because we have everybody within the departments that they can actually fulfill this uh, position. 175,000, you give me 50, I don't, for, I don't for that. But anyway, sorry, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, and you should sure. not be taking that of yours, sir. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, Senator Rhodes. Um, so would it be acceptable if we amended it to equ equ uh, have the uh, salary the same as the football coach every year? Would that be acceptable? No. You, 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 don't, uh, you don't need I, that much? or, or Se Senator, that's above my pay rail level. I'm not even going to comment on it. Okay. All right. All right. So. But I, I would just respond to Senator Favela's question. That the ozone layer problem has been fixed because hum humanity ban banded together and said, okay, we got to stop doing this. And we did, and the ozone hole is getting smaller just as predicted. So this whole idea that somehow we can't have, that we as humans don't have an effect on what the climate's going to be is yeah. just not correct. Right. So. Plus, there are two aspects to this. Mitigation is what we're doing to reduce the carbon in the atmosphere. And Hawaii has, does not up, have yeah, yeah. the largest effect on yes, our... Yes, can you speak up a little yes. louder? Oh, I'm sorry. Please. Thank you. Um, so we, we want, need to mitigate as much as possible, but we're only 1.4 million people. 
out of an 8 billion person planet. So we're going to have climate change regardless. And because we're an island, we have to adapt. We're going to have to adapt over the years, decades, and centuries to protect our people and protect as much of our island as we possibly can. It's a huge issue. And that, that's why I think it deserves a position at that level. Thank you. Any other questions for the committee? Seeing none, recess for decision making. Are we ready to decision make on our 1 p.m. ETAN agenda? First bill on the agenda is Senate Bill 2500. Uh, recommendation is to is to do a SD1, uh, adding in a one full time uh, full time position. Um, also noting the blank appropriation on page seven for the next committee to consider the appropriate amount. Committee members, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Chair votes aye. Senator Wakai for the vote. Vice Chair votes yes. Senator Fukunaga. Aye. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Fabella. Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoit. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa is excused. Chair, you have four in favor, motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Next up, Senate Bill 2675 relating to renewable energy and food security. A recommendation is to do a SD1, um, including the amendments from the Hawaii Department of Ag testimony submitted during this hearing and defecting the date to January 1st, 2060, noting the blank appropriation on page three and five for the next committee to consider the appropriate amount. Committee members, any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair Wakai for the vote, Chair votes aye. Noting the presence of all members, any opposition or reservations to the Chair's recommendation, we pass this measure with amendments. Having seen and heard none, Chair, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoy. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Awa is excused. Chair, you have four in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Next is Senate Bill 2935. Recommendation is to uh, defect the date to January 1st, 2060, and technical amendments. Uh, any discussion from the committee? Seeing none, uh, Chair votes aye. Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Noting, noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations to the Chair's recommendation, we pass this measure with amendments. Having seen and heard none, Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Same recommendation for AEN. Any discussion? Chair votes aye. Chair votes aye. Vice Chair votes aye. Senator DeCoy. Aye. Senator Rhodes. Aye. Senator Owa is still excused. Chair, you have four in favor. Motion is adopted. Thank you, members. Next up, Senate Bill 3097. Uh, my recommendation is to defer this bill indefinitely. Thank you. And thank you for joining us today. This meeting is adjourned. Hello and welcome to Senate Committee on Energy, Economic Development and Tourism for the 120 Agenda. This meeting is being streamed live on YouTube. In the likely event that we have to abruptly end this hearing due to technical difficulties, committee will reconvene to discuss any outstanding business at 1 p.m. on Thursday, February 15, in this room 2 to 9, and a public notice will be posted on the legislature website. Um, please note we have a one-minute uh, time limit. First bill up uh, relating to Hawaii tourism, Senate Bill 2400. Uh, first testifying, Mr. Daniel Nahopi for HTA. 
Aloha, Chair Dekoy, um, Vice Chair Wakai, and members of the committee. The Hawaii Tourism Authority appreciates the opportunity to offer comments on SB 2400. We value the dedication that each of our volunteer board members brings to HTA. You know, the breadth and diversity and perspective experiences at networks enables robust discussion at our board table. We would like to offer an amendment that um, adjusts section subsection B7, where it states, no person who shall serve as a member of the board of directors of a current contractor of the Hawaii Tourism Authority shall be eligible to sit as a member of the board of directors of the Hawaii Tourism Authority until at least two years have expired between the person's termination from service to the contractor and the person's appointment to the authority's board of directors. We believe this change would retain the intent of the subsection while reflecting HTA's contractual engagements with more than one organization and not just the Hawaii Visitors and Convention Bureau. Mahalo for this opportunity to provide these comments on SB 2400. Thank you. Uh, anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, uh, any questions for from the committee? Uh, Senator Kim? It's not really a question, but I want to thank you for the language because, um, yeah, we're trying to figure out not having to name the contractors because they could change. Um, so appreciate that language. Currently, is there anything in this that um, has a prohibition on conflicts of interest? I know that it is embedded in other measures or other statutes um, for board members. It's in, um, in our board bylaws. There's a statement for conflict. A conflict. And what, what, what's that word? I can bring that up if you'd like to. Okay. Because um, I'm wanting to um, put in, Madam Chair, a recommend uh, amendment to say no person shall serve a board member if their business position or other undertakings in which the person have a financial interest constituting a conflict of interest. And okay. then no board member shall assist any person, business entity, or act in a representative capacity in which HTA has awarded a contract for a fee or other consideration. Uh, we will check with our um, AG if that can be added. Well, we can add yeah. that. We have to check with the AG. I'm and I think wondering it, if there are something already embedded in the statute, because I know that um, Conflict of interest statute, I think, is in 84 84-14. But I did not see it in the HTA language. Anyway, Madam Chair, that would be my recommendation. Thank you, Senator Kim. Okay. Okay. Uh, Senator, uh, Senator Fovella. Yeah, just a couple of questions. Um, all, all positions of the HTA board filled, and how many of the positions do require confirmation by the city? There are three um, board members that have not been confirmed at this point, uh, appointed at the end of last year, uh, end of last fiscal year. Could this pending measure and affect the date upon, upon, date upon approval limit the two members or three, mem three members, any limit, anyone? Excuse me, could you repeat the question? this affect of any of the three or two, three members um, or any one of them in this so according to our interpretation of, of this bill, and uh, we are still waiting to hear from our AG in consultation, the bill is not specific on which members would then be decreased. Uh, there's no specification or who actually makes the decision on which members would be removed from the board. Uh, in our bylaws also, we do not have a provision for decreasing the size of the board at this time. Okay. Thank you. Mahalo. Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, Senate Bill 2406, relating to the Hawaii Tourism Authority. First testifier, uh, Daniel. Uh, Aloha. The Hawaii Tourism Authority stands on its um, testimony for comments on this bill. And we are open to any further discussion on the marketing, et cetera. 
Thank you. Uh, next up, Bruce Ramsey in support. Leah Hollingsworth Ramsey also in support. Robin Kay in support. And Shannon Matson in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, any questions from the committee? See, oh, Senator Kim. So Daniel, your testimony says, in other competitive destinations, common practice is separate the marketing and operations of the convention center. Yes. Can you name me one hotel, large hotel here in Hawaii that competes with the convention center for conventions that separates the marketing from their property? Our um, testimony is indicating of other destination management organizations. I that. Yes. But so, I need to know what, what hotel, what large okay. hotel here that competes with the convention center for conventions? Yes. Because you have several large ones that do that. Which one of them, or any of them, separate the marketing from the property? For the, the two hotels that are mainly have the size and capacity compared to the convention center, the Hawaii Convention Center, would be the Sheraton Waikiki or the Hilton Hawaiian Village, both in Waikiki. The specific uh, employees of those properties, of course, market their destination, um, market their property, but our meetings and conventions, which is Meet Hawaii, also markets those properties to organizations and conferences. And that's where the um, separation also occurs. And I also followed up on uh, a request about the size. So I did a research on the number of attendees that would qualify in both citywide, which is having an event at the convention center or at a single property. Of the top 20 uh, events in 2023, that were over 2,500 attendees, only four were uh, located outside of the convention center. So about 20% were located outside of the convention center. All else were situated within the convention center um, property. Which is how many out of how many? Out of the top 20. Out of the top 20. In the 20. 20. So I can not, send you a table. That's for not that. that many. Yeah, right. So again, so not, neither of the hotels, large hotels, separate their marketing from their property. And what you said was that the current contractor that you folks contract to market the convention center also markets those there, properties as so well. So isn't that a conflict? Again, they're in direct competition. So you just made my case here. Why would we why would we contract someone else to market the convention center and also market their competitors? And there's no hotel that, that does that, that separates it. So why would you do that? I think in our statement here that the way we approach the sale or selling business meetings and convention business for the state of Hawaii and the Hawaiian Islands is an overall destination approach. So we first reach to these clients and potential associations and organizations. And then we work with them to see which facility is most appropriate for their needs. Some years they have it in a single property. Some years, uh, especially in the, o five, the O's and the fives, they may have it larger and they'll be at the convention center. So having a separate marketing arm that can flex between single property leads and convention center or larger citywide types of leads is very productive in terms of working with our potential clients. Okay. So Daniel, when I started here in 2000 and I was the chair of the tourism committee, this has been a concern consistently. The first and foremost is being able to pay the debt service and being able to take care of the convention center. Correct. That's first and foremost. Okay. The other concern is that if the state gave, didn't give you one more dollar for marketing, would people not come here? Would tourists not come here? Well, we've seen no, already. Just answer the question. Would tourists not come here? The level of if tourism would not be here. If not one dollar more, would tourists not come here? That's the question. Yes or no? Some tourists would not come here. Yeah, but tourists will still come. And the reason they come is because you have all of these other airlines, hotels, that is spending marketing dollars to bring them here for their property. For their property. And we benefit as a state, just as they benefit from our overall. It doesn't necessarily mean we should be marketing their properties 
first and foremost. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying we don't do it, but you know, you folks are losing, you're losing sight of what is first and foremost your goal as the HTA and building the convention center. That taxpayers' dollars have gone into that and continue to go into that. Okay, so that is should be first and foremost. Yes, and I agree Unless with that. Unless it comes out of your pocket to pay for the convention center and pay for the debt service and pay for all the repairs, that should be first and foremost that we need to fill the convention center. And we need to, whoever's marketing and selling the convention center should eat, sleep, and provide, just like the hotels do. And if there's a problem with the selling of something or promise, it's within the hotel and they're accountable. You have a third party, like we used to have HVCB, Marketing Convention Center. You just went from HVCB to this other entity. They're, they're not there every 24 seven. They're not there when the complaints come in. They're not there when they promise something and they didn't get delivered. I want so to what the, day, the day Sheraton or Hilton separates the marketing from their property, then I think we should do this. But until that day happens, then I don't think we should separate it. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? See none. Uh, moving on to Senate Bill 2537 relating to energy. First testifier, Mark Glick with Chief Energy Officer. Thank you, Chair Energy Office. Uh, we stand by our testimony uh, for this important housekeeping bill. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, any questions from the committee? Seeing none, next bill up is Senate Bill 2974 related to economic development. Uh, first testifier up is DB Eugene Tian. Good afternoon, Chair and Vice Chair, members of the committee. Uh, DBA has been on, stand on our written testimony in support of this bill. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm here for questions. Thank you. Next up, Janine Suki testifying for Hawaiian Telecom. Hi, Chair, Vice Chair, so members of the committee, Janine Suki with Hawaiian Telecom, and we too stand on our support testimony. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, uh, Chamber of Commerce in person, in support. Aloha, Senators. Thank you for the opportunity to testify. Eliza Talbot with the Chamber of Commerce Hawaii, standing in support. Um, we also offered some amendments because we wanted to make sure that um, the ethnic and regional and diversity chambers are also included in the board, as well as um, other members of the business community. And we're open to other suggestions, as well as um, perhaps small business as well. Thank you. Thank you. Here, uh, next up, uh, Lauren Zerbo for Hawaii Food Industry Association on Zoom. Uh, good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair, and members of the committee. I'm Alexis Chapman on behalf of HFIA. We stand on our testimony and support, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Stephanie Sakamoto in support for HCUL. Benjamin Sadowski, Unite Here Local 5 in opposition, and Regina Gregory also in opposition. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none, any questions? Seeing none. Next up, Senate Bill 3061, relating to solar energy storage loan program. Uh, first up, uh, DBED in support. <laughs> Thank you, man. Uh, next up, uh, Gwen, uh, Gwen uh, Yamwal um, for green in infrastructure. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, next up, uh, PUC, Leo Asuncion. Chair, Vice Chair, members of the committee, Leo Asuncion, Chair of the PUC. We'll stand on our written testimony, uh, providing comments, uh, and basically supporting the intent of the Thank you. Uh, next up, Ted Bolin in support with Climate Protectors Hawaii, Rocky Mould in support for Hawaii Solar Energy. Virginia Tincher in support, Mike Onofredi in support, John Conwell in support, and Michael Markridge in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Uh, any questions? Seeing, seeing none, I, I have one. Uh, Energy Office, Mark, if you can. So 
So, so how many loans will, will made were made with the fifty million, and much closer will get? How will get? How will this get us to our clean energy goals? Um, well, in the in the past, are you talking about with the uh, the white green infrastructure authority loans in the past? Yeah. Yeah, I mean the the, yeah, the ability to handle uh, particularly low and those that who have gone to low and moderate income are important about making sure that um, the energy transition basically reaches everybody. So doing more of that um, makes sense, mostly from the standpoint of those that wouldn't normally get bank financing. Thank, thank you. Sure. Okay. Next up, we have Senate Bill 3235 relating to energy. First up, Gwen Yellen will allow testifying for a green infrastructure authority. Thank you. Uh, next up, Michael Angelo testifying for DCCA. Good afternoon, Chair, Vice Chair. We stand on our written testimony for that account. Thank you. Next up, Leo Sanchez with Public Utilities Commission. Chair, Vice Chair, we'll stand on our written Thank you. Next up, Luis Oliveria with Department of Budget and Finance with comments. Uh, Dave Mullinek testifying for Greenpeace Hawaii on Zoom. Dave. Yes, aloha. Can you hear me? Yes. Aloha. Okay. Well, thank you so much for hearing this uh, bill. Um, all the testimony has been in support, and, uh, and everyone seems to understand how important this is. Um, this will help uh, capital constrained households to switch to lower costs as well as cleaner source electricity. So low and moderate income households will directly benefit from this program, help overcome financial challenges for higher electricity costs. Electricity costs, my, my apologies there. So uh, anyway, we're in strong support of this. I think it's a really great idea and, and I think everyone so far testifying in, in support of this as well. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Uh, next up, Ted Bolin, uh, Climate Protective Soy in support. We have about about 15 others all in support. Uh, anybody else in the room wishing to testify on this measure? See none. Any questions uh, from the members? Okay. Uh, Gwen, please. Sorry. So, Gwen, what will it cost to establish the Hui, and what are the incentives for anyone to invest in it? Yeah, so it would, we would need a body, a uh, fund manager, and just some startup costs for legal fees towards documentation, as well as marketing. Um, incentives for people to uh, uh, invest would be the federal and state tax credits that they would get, their proportionate share. So I'm kind of looking, I'm still modeling it out. It could be as low as $5,000 to invest. You know, this is more for the uh, middle income to help the lower, lower income um, uh, people who don't own their roofs, right, in condos. Um, so if, if they invest $5,000, they could get between a 20 to 30% return, depending on how much I can leverage the funds with other um, capital. Okay, yeah. thank you. Uh, next up, Senate Bill 3382 relating to taxation. Uh, first up, testifying Department of Taxation, Gary Suganuma. Hey, good afternoon, uh, Chair, Vice Chair, Senators, Jeff Michaels, on behalf of the Director. So we'll stand under just wanting to offer comments. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Next up, Tom Yamachika uh, on Zoom with comments for Tax Foundation of Hawaii. Yes, good afternoon, Chair, members of the committee. This is Jade McMillan on behalf of Tom Yamachika for the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. We will stand on our written comments. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up, Alice Lee from testifying for County of Maui, County of Maui Council uh, in support. Anybody else wishing to testify on this measure? Seeing none. Uh, any questions from the committee? Yeah. Uh, Senator Favela. Hey, good afternoon, Senator. Yeah, what specific recommendation do you have to provide the definition and criteria to the online eligibility requirements for the credit? This credit in the DOTEX testimony concerned 
piece of boat. The scale of the bill. Um, so specifically with um, some of the breadth of the bill, um, the tricky thing with the definitions is we're not actually sure. Um, the department doesn't have the expertise in terms of which investments or what parameters around those investments are actually going to help Maui the most. And we know, you know, this is super important. We understand the intent and the recovery. Um, if the committee or if the legislature um, intends to move forward, if there is a third party um, that the committee feels might be better positioned, DOTAX would uh, be happy to work with that third party to sort of formulate those concepts and figure out how to make this best work. All right. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Any other questions? Seeing none, we will recess for decision making. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're ready to decision make on our 1.20 p.m. agenda. The first bill on this agenda is Senate Bill 2400 related to White Tourism Authority. Recommendation is to do a SD1, uh, incorporating amendments from Senator Kim on page three, and seven, HTA's language, add on eight, no person shall serve as a board member if their business position or other undertakings in which the person have a financial interest constituting a conflict of interest, and nine, no board member shall assist any person, business entity, or act in a representative capacity in which HTA has awarded a contract for a fee or other considerations, as well as amendments from HTA. Seven, no person who has served as a member of the board of directors of a current contractor of the Hawaii Tourism Authority shall be eligible to sit as a member of the board of directors of the Hawaii Tourism Authority until at least two years have expired between the person's termination from service to the contractor and the person's appointment to the authority to the authority's board of directors. Any uh, discussion, committee members? Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Chair votes aye. I vote yes. Senator Fukunaga. Aye. Senator Kim. Aye. Senator Favela. Aye. Chair, your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. Uh, next bill is Senate Bill 2406 relating to the Hawaii Tourism Authority. My recommendation is to do a SD1, noting the blank time interval for the HTA report submission. Committee, committee members, any discussion? Seeing none, Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Chair votes aye. Noting the presence of all members, any opposition or reservations to the Chair's recommendation? We see and heard none, Chair. Your recommendation is adopted. Thank you. The next bill is Senate Bill 2537 relating to energy. My recommendation is to pass as an SD1 defecting the date to January 1st, January 1st 2015. Any any discussion, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair for the vote. Chair votes aye. Noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations to the Chair's recommendation? Having seen heard none, Chair, your recommendations are adopted. Thank you. Next bill on the agenda is Senate Bill 2974 relating to economic development. Recommendation is to pass with an S SD1 defecting the date to January 1st 2016. Noting in the committee report from DBED testimony the need for funding in the amount of 200000 for one full-time position or hiring a consulting firm would be needed to carry out the purpose of this bill. Also adding the language from the chamber's testimony. Any discussion, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Chair goes aye. Noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations? Having seen and heard none, Chair, recommendations. Yeah. Thank you. Next bill we have is Senate Bill 3061 relating to the Solar Energy Storage Loan Program. Our recommendation is to pass as an SD1 and technical non-substantive amendments needed for clarity and consisting and defecting the date to January 1st, 2050. Any discussion? Seeing none, uh, Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Chair votes aye. Noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations? We've seen and heard none, Chair. Your recommendations adopted. Thank you. Next is Senate Bill 3235 relating to energy. Recommendation is to pass as an SD1, adding the amendments from Hawaii Green Infrastructures Authority testimony, adding energy services agreement to 196-A definitions on page 1, lines 13 through 70, at energy project reference in 196-B. On page 2, lines 12 through 16, change the financing vehicle from a loan to an energy service agreement and on page three lines 19 to 20, 
changing financing vehicle from loans to energy services agreements and technical non substantive amendments needed for clarity and consistency and effecting the date to January 1st, 2050. Also noting in the committee report to a blank appropriation on page four for the next committee to consider the appropriate amount. Any discussion from the members? Seeing none, Vice Chair Kai for the vote, Chair goes aye. Noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations? Having seen and heard none, Chair, the recommendation is adopted. Thank you. And our last bill on the agenda today is SB 3382 relating to taxation. Our recommendation is to pass as an SD1, amending the applicability date of this credit be delayed until tax years beginning after December 31st, 2024, and technical non-substantive amendments needed for clarity and consistency, defecting the date to January 1st, 2060. Noting in the committee report the concerns from DOTAX, the need for definitions and criteria to outline the eligibility requirements for the credit. Any discussion, members? Seeing none, Vice Chair Kai for the vote. Chair goes aye. Noting the presence of all EET members, any opposition or reservations? Having seen and heard, none, Chair, recommendations adopted. Thank you. And with that, I'd like to thank the committee and everybody's here in attendance, and we are adjourned. <laughs>